This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. doing up here in the attic? Comedy at one off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nick. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was your age, you used to get the old TV sets, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Well, uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the com net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded informed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight it's Gimmicky Detectives. But before we get into tonight's big show, I want to tell you, as usual, we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 here on ACTV Cable 21. And if you want to write to us, we're at Box 151526, Columbus, Ohio, 432. One, five. And now, gimmicky detectives. Of course, uh, all through the 60s and 70s, we, we saw this concept. It just wasn't enough to have a detective show because there were so many hundreds of them. It had to have a hook. It had to have a gimmick. And that's why we're going to talk about tonight, gimmicky detectives. And let's just jump right into this. Uh, Wilbert, let's go. What okay, we well, as, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, now, uh, we talk about gimmicky detectives, probably the most gimmicky, the most gimmick-laden show of the 60s. But I, but I have to put an asterisk by this. Is, is um, <laughs> well, Batman. We, uh -huh. we got to look at the guy. I mean, he's, he's basically, that's what he's doing. He's out there doing detective work. If you go with the original um, comic book format, right. he's doing detective work. Now, the show just made he's him... He's hardly a detective. <laughs> made him hardly a detective. He, he had all the, the computer and everything to do it mm -hmm. for him. He had all his other gimmicks to do. But oh, it, they but gathered it, clues <coughs> and whatnot. Well, yeah, but they That's were like... That's detective -y. It was... There, I don't know. The, the, it's that bat computer. That darn bat computer. <laughs> that did all the work for them. Let's pour these noodles in here and <laughs> see what it comes up with. Oh! Oh! It says... It says the lady's... She's trapped in the... Yeah. In the soup factory. Yes. Oh, we could have figured <laughs> that out. Or, but it's... um, Yeah. Well, certainly the first... The first uh, <coughs> appearances of the... Of 
actually detectives on TV other than the classic uh, gumshoe uh, Mickey Spillane type character. If anyone other than that was probably all the stuff that Warner Brothers was churning out the early 60s, stuff like Surfside 6 okay. and 77 Sunset Strip and Hawaiian Eye. And these were all the same show. Okay, uh, different locations. Different locations, same show. You basically had these, the two hunky guys and the girl Friday secretary slash bimbo that would be there uh, just, just, to, to, just to keep the guys interested watching the show. And, uh, and no, no, you were supposed to be interested in the intrigue of the plot. <laughs> Which the there wasn't any. And the car. Yeah, and the, the car. car. <laughs> so it was all the same show, basically. Uh, and uh, that, the gimmick of it was uh, just two young guys as detectives. That was the whole gimmick. Two cool. Yeah. Two young guys. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, so that's really where it started. But uh, I'd say uh, the first, as far as I could find, of of a truly um, of a detective with a gimmick would probably be Burke's Law. Okay. You know, and the gimmick was he was rich. <laughs> he, was rich and he, he could do it. He what does a rich, rich guy do with his extra time? <laughs> he detectives. That's right. <laughs> And that, well, that same theme has come up later in um, other shows. Uh, well, they've brought that same thing back. You get the, you get the rich guy that can afford to go out and spend some time doing detective work. I mm -hmm. mean, I think the latest examples of that were like, um, well, Hot to Hot, or, yeah. uh, <laughs> or uh, what's his name, Matt Houston. There's another one there. And, well, I guess you Wasn't can look that the whole idea behind Remington Steel, too? Well, I no. I mean, isn't Remington a rich guy? He's, he yeah, wasn't. He no, wasn't not rich really, at all. because he was, oh, he, that, he was just a nobody. That he was just looked sham. rich, though. And he wow. yeah, that he was picked sham. up on the thing, see, because uh, Laura Holt she used his name. Had, the, um, had the detective agency, but nobody right. would believe a woman. And so well. she decided to create this Remington Steel character. And then here he this, comes. This guy suddenly shows us, I'm rubbing into steel. Well, that's a new gimmick. That's a totally new gimmick. But that's, that's on further. Old that's gimmicks. on further. Yeah, right. that's further ahead. There. But uh, so uh, let's see, what do we have after Burke's Law? Um, well, let's see, I'm looking through here. Uh, well, uh, right off of Burke's Law, Honey West. No, Honey West, yeah, but she, well, they both kind of blended into the right. spy thing, but actually they were detectives. It's just that. She had a lot of, she had some gimmicks and things there too, and then she had mm -hmm. her she had chauffeur, some gimmicks, her bodyguard. Huh? She had some gimmicks? Yeah, she had some gimmicks. <laughs> gimmicks? <yes. laughs> two, two very prominent oh, gimmicks. Back <laughs> started the Noticing that there. body language there. <laughs> nice. She talked about her gimmicks. <laughs> tight black suit that she wore, she had exactly. gimmicks. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of the things you find, though. A lot of these spy shows that we had talked about before kind of meld also, in there too. Or also the kind of detective, yeah. Show. That's and, true. That, and another thing we're going to run into here is the. Um, Police shows that right. run into the detective right. thing because there's just that. Because the, the, the ones that are there. supposedly detectives, but uh, I mean that are policemen, but you rarely see them doing any real police work. Right. You know, I mean, you don't see them filling out reports. You don't see them even at the at the police station. You see them out there solving crimes, and it's like, well, there's hardly any difference. They're basically they're detectives. That's all they do. Right. And so some of some of those might be included as well in our in our travels tonight. Well, let's see. Um, really, a lot in the '60s. Uh, unless you get into the spy area, there wasn't a lot. Not, not really. Uh, you had. Uh, I had uh, another example here. Where is it? Johnny Staccato. Ooh. <laughs> and this is this is. Okay. Uh, uh, Sounds this like a music lesson show. 19, or something. Well, it was 1959 to 1960, and it was about this. Uh, character and yes he was a jazz musician and a detective hey Ooh. so this is your gimmick here <laughs> so a little lethal combination <laughs> right so we had that we had another show called um oh shoot i saw it here um, well i can't remember the name of the show but uh it's about a uh about this british guy who comes over and he's a detective here mark saber there we okay. go, 1951 to 1960. So it does actually count as a 60s show. Wow. Oh, so it's where you got this Bourbon Street Beat, New Orleans. Right, but that, but that's also Bourbon Street Beat is a lot like Hawaiian Eye or Surfside Six, <laughs> where the gimmick was the location. <laughs> right, the location was mostly the gimmick. But then it seemed like at one point you could turn on the TV and there wasn't anything on but detective shows. Right, and that was the 70s. Yeah. Yes. Really, I mean, you really don't see a lot of this. I mean, that's in the 70s, the it just really exploded. Kicked. Because they had to have them in order exactly. to make this guy different from that guy. 
from that chick to who Well, what they're really making them different from were the, um, your Jack Webb shows that were detect they were police dramas. There's, we're real policemen well, out here doing real well, police jobs. Well, the names jobs. were changed to protect mm -hmm. the innocent. Exactly. <laughs> we're talking about fiction. <laughs> <laughs> right. But Dragnet was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, um, what's that now? They got on those, uh, Cops or whatever. <laughs> this is nowhere real near cops. real life. I know. This is nowhere near just, real life. They just it's fuzz just fuzz out your face to protect right. the guilty. <laughs> exactly. Well, well so that's not to embarrass the guilty, I guess, is what it is. Embarrass them. So, yeah. so, so, the, so, the, so the silly things they do there. <laughs> You're gonna attack the police dog. Come on. <laughs> so, so I think the watershed year really was 1971 because we had in the same year uh, uh, produced Cannon, Columbo. Longstreet, Macmillan and Wife, uh, and I think McLeod. Let me see here. Yeah, wasn't uh, McLeod and Columbo and, and Heck Ramsey? Well, that was all, they on yeah. sort of a rotation? That was, that was the all NBC mystery movie, and that's why all these things showed up, uh, except for canon, basically. Yeah, Columbo was part of that, McLeod, oh, Heck yeah. Ramsey, M Macmillan and Wife. I liked Heck Ramsey just because it was different. It also, was a detective show, but he was like an old west sheriff detective kind of guy. Right. And he had a horse. Right. Well, that's, well, that's a plus in my book. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah, well, McLeod was the, the, the cowboy. Cowboy in the city with a horse kind of guy. Yeah, I think that kind of grew off of the, um, well, one of, that was uh, one Clint Eastwood movie where he's the, um, the cowboy detective who has to go to the city to find somebody. I can't remember the name uh, of it, but I, but I, right but now, I but do remember there was a movie like that. Yeah, I just well, think it kind of spun off of that. Right. Well, we had, um, well, we had Longstreet. Now, Longstreet's a really uh, fascinating uh, James Franciscus as the blind detective. And what happened was he's looking for clues or something, and he's right. in this place, and, oh, no, there's an explosion. Boom! He loses his eyesight. But wasn't that the same thing that happened to Ironside? He's someplace looking for clues. And oh, there's an explosion. Boom! <laughs> he loses use of his legs. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we'll, we'll use the explosion as the catalyst here right. to create a new, exactly. better detective. Exactly. <laughs> But, Don't uh, you think Ironsides was obnoxious, though? Oh, push me! Was push me! <laughs> push me, gentlemen! I'm an obnoxious kind of guy. He would get on my nerves. I'd push him down some steps hurry, in a minute. Hurry up. <sighs> <laughs> Lose some weight, man. i got to push you. <laughs> and, 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 and just how, how of course, all, a lot of these shows in the, uh, in the early 70s and late 60s, it was just incredibly demeaning to blacks. Well, true, <laughs> true. I mean, Ironside had the, I'm trying to remember the guy's name that was just basically his, his the guy who pushed him around. <laughs> <laughs> it's your job to push me around. And I'm, hurry up I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna berate you all the time. And don't make it look like it's hard to do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Detective Sergeant Ed Brown. <laughs> Detective Sergeant Ed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank goodness he could rose to this lofty position so he could push, push another a guy. Around. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. That's fun. Sign me up for that promotion. Yeah, but um, I um, Longstreet. That's that was a good one for what I saw of it. I mean, because you've got this guy. He's um, he's he is blind, and James yeah, James Franciscus actually wore dark contact lenses, so he actually had the effect of really being blind mm -hmm. so that he I mean he really got into the character and mm -hmm. he had a he had the white German Shepherd and he had the coolest martial arts instructor ever to hit TV <laughs> Bruce Lee was oh, his yeah. martial arts instructor there you go yeah <laughs> this was like his big break after um, well after years after the Green Hornet because he was really out there doing the martial arts things he was um, a teacher and all and then um, somehow they got together there and he decided well, let's let's have Bruce Lee be the instructor on this show. This will be great. Yeah. And so we did a few guest appearances there. Like it was about the second show, really. Right. Where Longstreet's rock, walking around here, some guys jump him, and then all of a sudden you see him come flying back out of there. Because Bruce Lee's out there, right. and he's he's knocking him back, kicking him <laughs> and everything. And so then he decides to you know take on Longstreet as a a student and helps him out. It was great. Now let's see. We've got uh, of course Columbo, and Columbo was kind of an anomaly because it was on. The NBC mystery movie, and yet there was never a mystery because in the, fir the first scenes of every Columbo, they show you not only what happened, but who did it. <laughs> and the, mystery was, yeah. the mystery was how, how Columbo is Columbo going to trick this guy into figure out, <laughs> trick this guy into admitting, you know, admitting some little clue, and, you know, it's like, 
uh, excuse me, um, weren't, didn't you, I remember you, you, um, you, weren't you the guy that, uh, Do you remember the Mad Magazine my wife, parody? My yeah. wife had, um, uh, a stew this day, and, uh, excuse me. It was, it was the stew, I remember, anyway, you're the guy, because there's the stain, the stew stain is right, right. there. Right. <laughs> but do you remember the Mad Magazine parody where they called him Claude Dumbo? <laughs> And that's just how I thought yeah. of it forever. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, so of course he's now Good come back in this new uh, the new ABC mystery movie. Yeah, Columbo's it's just uh, like a uh, what do you, uh, an institution. Oh, he's got charm. And near, and he's near got the charm. end, near the end, he was he was I'm sure for the new series, but for the last few episodes of the original series, he was making big bucks. I mean, they were paying him at the time. It was an enormous figure for a television personality, like a hundred grand an episode. Which wow. today it for is a it's lot. Almost of, as much as we make. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, t I mean, today for you know, I mean, uh, a supporting player on a on a on a mediocre sitcom can make a hundred grand without too much trouble. But then, <laughs> that was then that was a bucks. lot of money. <clears throat> a lot of money to me today, but you know. But anyways, hey. Um, so you had Columbo, you had McCloud, the cowboy detective. Yeah. You had McMillan and wife, the uh, husband and wife, the husband and wife like, with um, the. Uh, who, weren't they rich? <laughs> yeah, because it seems like the period kinda. of that was make millions and wife or he something like that. He was kind of rich. He wasn't like overly rich, but they were well off. They were well enough off to hire uh, Nancy Walker as a uh, as a maid, but yeah. uh, housekeeper. So, and then by golly, well, poor Miss McMillan gets killed somehow, and so then they just bring it back as McMillan. Millen, Millen. <laughs> Boy, that so was some years and later, and those <laughs> kind of uh, yeah, they yeah. have like a whole four episodes of that maybe. Yeah, that yeah. just didn't work. Well, let's see some other things for the uh, NBC mystery movie. You had Banachek. Yeah. yeah. George Popard is the Polish detective. <laughs> so, and he always give like these Polish uh, sayings and phrases. And that was basically the gimmick there. You remember? You're losing me. Well, <laughs> well, well, if the gimmick is, is race, then Beretta had it. Right. Mr. Italian. Right, yeah. He's an Italian, yes. And that's the name of that tune. Yeah. <laughs> And so, every woman that he ever ran into was his cousin. Yeah. <laughs> this is my cousin. Billy, this is my cousin. Uh, mm -hmm. From, you know, this is my cousin. Beretta was the one I watched the most, though. It had well, a bird. <laughs> you, got, you got Beretta, buddy. Yeah, Beretta, bird. Beretta sprang from the whole, the whole Serpico thing. Yeah, Serpico and Toma. Serpico, Serpico, Serpico Toma, became Beretta. Toma, and then Toma, Toma became, became Beretta. Beretta. Because it was but like it was they, Robert Blake that made it, because... I don't know. I didn't think a whole lot of Toma. Took the same thing with Robert Blake, and for somehow, I liked it much better. Well, it worked because he was he was he was a little he was a just a pretty much a street guy, right? Yeah. A short street guy who went by his mm -hmm. own rules, but yet he was a detective, and he, he got along with everybody. I mean, he's got Rooster, this pimp that helps him. Yep. He's got Billy, the the yeah, the, the old the, the old, old guy that, street guy. Well, wasn't he the superintendent well, he, yeah, of the building? Yeah, he kind of like all? lived in the building too. And then, then Fred here is cockatoo. Hello. <laughs> well, at least Fred didn't like solve the mysteries for well, himself. Well, that's not true. <laughs> he would go out and do the work. He'd do the footwork himself. It was it was and, just and a, he would dress up show. like a woman sometimes. Oh, he'd dress up like dress anybody. Up in but when he was a woman, it was funny because he was just a homely woman. Let's say. <laughs> Kind of like when uh, when uh, Sylvester Stallone did the woman thing in that in that one movie where he was oh, a detective. That was that was funny. <laughs> he did it twice too. They liked it so well they had to do it twice. Yikes. Maybe he liked it so well he had to do it twice. <laughs> well, we won't get into that. <laughs> okay. But it was, it was Sly gonna do the same away. the same kind of idea. It was fun. Well, let's see. A uh, couple other things for mystery movie. We had uh, uh, ones that didn't work nearly as well. The ones that just kind of came and went. The Snoop Sisters. Oh, oh yeah. And this was just yes. like, wasn't this like two old ladies kind it of thing? Exactly. Like Miss Marple yeah. times two. <laughs> right, basically. Yeah, Miss Marple times two. Doing the whole mystery two. thing. But that's less of a detective and more of just a, a, a straight mystery type show. Yeah. Well, let's see. Then then you kind of switch over to CBS for a lot of this stuff. We get into we get into Canon. Now, wasn't Quinn Martin involved? Didn't he do Canon? Well, let's see here. I, I kind of think he did somehow. I, I I seem to remember that he did the whole, that he did like Canon and Kojak. I know he did Barnaby Jones. All that whole, that whole string of them that, because CBS saw that NBC was making a min off of these shows, and so they just cranked out a, human, a bunch of their own gimmicky detectives. We, we had Barnaby Jones, we had Canon, we had, um, 
Mm -hmm. Okay, Cannon Fat. Yes. Barnaby Jones. Old. Old. old, old. Okay. <laughs> Just plain old. <laughs> Buddy Epson, what can you do? Huh? <laughs> well, he's, he's old. He's getting old anyway. Let's yeah. make him a detective, an he's old detective. Old. <laughs> we had uh, stuff like um, stuff like Switch. Ooh. <laughs> Gosh, Switch. <laughs> Robert, uh, Robert, Robert Conrad, yeah, Robert, no. Are you sure it wasn't William Shatner? <laughs> <laughs> They're interchangeable. William Shatner and Robert Conrad, They're interchangeable. interchangeable. Yeah, Robert Conrad and, um, um, um. And William Shatner. <laughs> Eddie Albert, there you go. <laughs> Eddie Albert, straight from. Robert Wagner. Green Acres. Robert Wagner, Robert Conrad, what's the difference? Interchangeable. Oh, interchangeable. Interchangeable. <laughs> interchangeable names. And hey, Charlie Callis, that. <laughs> 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 oh, and Sharon Glass. Well, by go. golly, look at hey, there. She's One got of all first the great roles. detective stuff. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Cagney or, doesn't count, does it? Cagney and Lucy. Yeah, that's a detective show. Did it start show. in the 70s? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think remember. so. It's I still watch that on Lifetime and stuff. Well, let's see. So uh, That's like the only <coughs> female show where the female detectives get out there and bust their chops. Mm -hmm. they, they are listed as detectives. And be mothers. But it and did start in 80s. Date and have problems. It's, it's wonderful. Well, let's see. We had, um, uh, we had like the second wave of NBC stuff that got into the... Um, David Gerber stuff, mm. like police woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Detective Pepper Johnson. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> In the latest fashions, it's Pepper. <laughs> and stuff like, uh, oh yeah, Quincy. No. Oh, no, I like Quincy. <laughs> Jack Klugman has that a... crusading corner. <laughs> that was a fun I show, though. I like Quincy. I like Quincy. <laughs> fun. Everyone was like, and, and I, oh, he died because of this. Know, no, he didn't. He didn't I, die because of that. I'm going to find out what he did. <laughs> We're going to do all this testing. And, oh, no, he did come up with something completely different. Do you think Quincy's <laughs> given us the uh, standard mortuary morgue scene of eating while doing the autopsy? I think so. Which you see in every chance they get. Oh, we've got a mortuary morgue kind of scene. We're going to chop some, get some sandwiches in there. Yes, immediately. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I, th I think that's what kind of made that a standard now. <laughs> Quincy in kinda... movies and everything. Well, let's see, we had... Uh, wasn't, wasn't Quincy, though, kind of based on uh, Noguchi that's out there? There actually was a coroner out on the West Coast there for a long time. I think somewhat, but not, not a lot. No, it's, it's fiction. Pure fiction. <laughs> let's see, we got... Uh, well, we had the two... Uh, well, one was much better known than the other, but we had uh, Shaft and Tenafly, which was basically a clone of Shaft. Yeah. Oh, the, wait, nice. The black detective. Yes, you've got one of my favorites oh, yeah. there. Well, we're getting to that. <laughs> well, yet, uh, so, so yet and your Shaft, black... the series, just didn't really work right. as well because um, part of Shaft's thing was um, he's, he's this streetwise, he's, he's pretty much a, a dirty, downright detective yeah. guy. Uh -huh. if, he's, if he's not sleeping with a woman, by golly, it's just not a show. That's I mean, right. That's the thing that made the <laughs> movies big. And that's right. Just couldn't do that very much on the, in the 70s there on TV. It just wasn't wasn't done, so that's that was right. like one part of the thing they just kind of left out. <laughs> like he did the detective things, he got to wear the black leather. I mean, this is something that Robert Roundtree really appreciated. He liked wearing the black Robert, leather. Richard but Roundtree. Richard, Richard Roundtree. Did I say Richard Robert? Roundtree. Ha! Richard Roundtree. Ha! Ha! Interchangeable. <laughs> Richard, Robert, what the yeah, heck? I don't think Richard that Roundtree. Robert Roundtree. So. But anyway. Well, so we had uh, some of the, uh, then we went into the down and out type detectives, like the Rockford Five. Because <laughs> <laughs> this was just basically a guy, you know, that everything went wrong for him, and, and, you, and you see that reverberate all through. You see uh, basically Magnum is pretty much, is a, he's a lot better off, but, but it's still, everything's like, it, but well, we still have the old, you know, oh, everything's going wrong, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm getting slammed by people, and <gasps> Higgins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we had that show. Uh, and of course, ABC went into the kind of went into the glamorous <laughs> because it was the Fred Silverman era. We had to have Charlie's Angels. No. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are we really going to show them detectives? Are we going to are we going to stoop that low and call them detectives? Was Charlie's Angels really necessary? No. It was a detect. They were detectives. They were bimbos. <laughs> I just never really put them in a category. I, I Which, didn't of course, know what the heck. That's a TNA and, show. And again, and again, that reverberated into the 80s yeah. with, with that uh, show Partners in Crime with Lonnie Anderson and Linda Carter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> basically the same basic concept. Although there weren't as many. I mean, Charlie's Angels, I mean, it was always three, but yet you got into the part where there's like, oh, if you go back and count, there's like, what, six or seven angels right. all together? Right. They and, lose and, one, and, they gain and, another. And that show was a lot more, oh, a, I can't a lot do more it blatant. This week. My sister will fill in. <laughs> you know, it's like it, it was a lot more blatant on that show. The the, the, the sexual content because it was like, well, oh. angels, you're gonna have to go to the uh, massage parlor, uh, uh, <laughs> beauty and, pageant, uh, and from there to, uh, to the topless bar, yeah, swim <laughs> <laughs> swimsuit factory. You know, it's like, and find out where those guys are. You know. <laughs> So, so we had that. Uh, uh, we had kind of like the uh, beginning of the of the Cannell, the uh, Stephen J. Cannell stuff, stuff like Richie Brockman, Private Eye, mm. of course, uh, uh, right off of Rockford Files, uh, which of course begat uh, Riptide and and all of the Cannell stuff, where every stuff blows up and nobody dies shows, <laughs> <laughs> like the A Team. Yeah. <laughs> Every well, week, the A-Team was detected. blowing the stuff up. The obligatory shot of, oh, hey. of the car slash jeep slash truck blowing up, flipping over, and the two guys kind of getting out and shaking their heads. Whoa, whoa, whoa what happened? Not a scratch. Good thing we had our seat belts yeah. on. <laughs> Good night, those burritos. Yeah. <laughs> well, a couple, I had a couple other ones here. We had... Um, we had 1979 Big Seamus, Little Seamus, <laughs> which is the tough guy <laughs> team with the cute kid. <laughs> and this was, um, I'm not, I'm, uh, I know I'm thinking the wrong actor. I'm thinking Charles Durning, but I know that's not right. It's Brian... Dennehy? Brian, Brian Dennehy. Dennehy. Okay. There you go. Brian Dennehy and Ricky Schroeder, I believe. No, no. I believe it's Ricky Schroeder. That sounds Schroeder. right. And then uh, these are just kind of like the uh, miscellaneous stuff. Uh, a lot of it uh, reverberating into the into the 80s. No, Cassie, Doug McKeon was the little kid. Doug, oh, okay, Cassie and Just Company, which was kind of a clone of Police Woman, because it was also <laughs> Andy Dick is in the same role. <laughs> uh, we had Black's Magic. Yeah. With, oh, I uh, like that one. Al Linden and uh, Harry Morgan as the father and son, and the, the the son was a famous magician, and and the father was a con man. <laughs> yeah, that was let's a see. Good one, though. Uh, some other stuff from the 80s. Oh, Cover Up. Hmm. <laughs> Fascinating yeah. show was uh, the the uh, photographer and the hunky fashion model guys. And this was the... Oh, I missed that one. This what was, year was that? This was, uh, hmm, uh, 84 to 85. And had the... And this was okay. a fascinating show because this was uh, John Eric Hexum was on originally on the show. This was a show where he was playing around with the with the gun that had blanks in it and shot himself and oh, killed himself. And then they had to have another character show up. Yeah. Literally killed himself during the uh, during the, <laughs> the, the um, filming of the show. It wasn't like the first time that it happened because I mean back with um, um uh oh. With it was a that was a, a Western show. Um Alias Smith and Jones. There you go. One of them yeah, did that. Yeah, someone did that on that. So um, it's kind of the same kind well, of thing. Well, do, do we? It looks like we got to <coughs> ra wrap up. Any finish, closing you, comments? You'd forgot to mention Ten Speed and Brown shoe. Yeah, I was going to go back. Jeff to that. Goldblum Bloom. And, and Lavar Burton. No, no. Ben Vereen. Ben, ben Vereen. He Ben Vereen all his life, and you can't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm <Dick>. sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't. We didn't mention Stashky and Hatch either. <laughs> That's okay. Well, that was more police than well, detectives. Well, I mean, but they, they were detectives, though. Yeah. Well, let's what about Kojak? Oh, jeez. <laughs> we just we just lost a whole I bunch. Mean, we may gee. have to have a second show about yeah. it. I mean, hey. gee, who okay. loves you, baby? Barney who Miller. loves you, baby? <laughs> who well, loves you? <laughs> who loves you? <laughs> well, next who time, loves you, baby? next time on Vast Wasteland, uh, if we don't do a continuation of this, maybe we will. I don't know. We got a show on commercials of the 60s and 70s so i hope you enjoy that so and we've for all got to of us thank our marvelous crew of brad and giles because we don't have a chiron for this week sorry yes we so don't that's have it a board. for all of us here at vast wasteland uh, we'll see you next time with commercials or something else we don't know we don't good night know. everybody We're